Welcome to the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Welcome to St. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, if you have your lesson book, turn to page number 34. And if you don't have one, that's fine too. We're going to be studying. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. but now, in, in the lesson book on, on page number 34, we're going to try and uh, conclude chapter 5 here. And uh, the writer has here in the heading uh, need, the need rather for consistency, the need for consistency. And the writer says here, he says, Paul concludes this portion of his letter with a plea for consistency on the part of the Galatian brother. If we belong to Christ, then we are to crucify, mortify, or put to death, make inactive the passions and desires of the flesh. This is, this is easier said than done in a lot of cases. <laughs> you know, he, he again uses the term walk to show that our daily living ought to correspond or be consistent with the faith we profess. If we have been made alive in the spirit, forgiven, justified, and made righteous, then we ought to walk in the spirit. Let the word revealed by the Spirit to our spirit guide us. Uh, he says, for more on being made alive in the spirit, see Jesus' teaching to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verses, verses 5 to verse number 8. Now, as we concluded on, on last we met, uh, we, had, we had finished up on the works of the flesh, uh, which are the things that we as Christians, those are the things that we need to avoid. You know, um, those things, those, those, those things, those works of the flesh, these are the things that will keep us from our desired goal, and that's heaven. Um, and so those were the things that uh, we, we, we concluded on. And, and, and so now, what we're starting to do is we're working on uh, what Paul calls the fruit of the Spirit, which are the things that uh, this Christian life should produce. Um, and, and if we're lacking, if we're lacking in any of these particular areas, I believe that as the old saying goes, as we learn better, we need to do better. Yeah, yeah as we learn better, we need, we need to do better. Uh, the Word of the Lord says that if we draw nigh to Him, then he will draw nigh to us, James chapter 4, verse, verse number 8. And so if we walk in the Spirit, then this is the fruit that it will produce in our lives. Now, the first fruit mentioned here is love. Uh, Brother Walk, if you will. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. And let's start with verse number. Let's start with verse number one. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity? And become a sounding brass or a tinkling something. Mm -hmm. And though I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mysteries. All knowledge, though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Mm -hmm. Charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, 
Charity and bond is not itself, it is not puffed up. Do it not behave itself unseemly, seek it not around, it is not easily provoked. Mm -hmm. Think of no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear of all things, believe of all things, hope of all things, endure of all things. Mm -hmm. Char charity never fails. But whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether they whether there be told, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. That's good, Brother Walker. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, now 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 the word charity is mentioned at least six times in, in these eight verses. Mm -hmm. Which lets me know that whatever this word charity means mm -hmm. is pretty important. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty important. Yeah, and so I looked up the word charity and the, de and the definition, the definition for the word charity as it is used here is love. Now, this is one of the fruits of the Spirit that Paul talks about in Galatians chapter 5. Uh, let's go over there real quick. And we'll come back. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, verse 23, temperance. Paul says, against such there is no law. Yeah, and so this word charity, it, it means love. Yeah, yeah, and so as far as I can see, nothing we do, because Brother Walker covered a, a bunch of things. Paul said, if I do all of this, I feed the poor, I, uh, it means nothing if there is no love. Yeah, it means nothing. Yeah, all of your labor, if, it, if, it, if it, without love, it means nothing. And so our love as Christians is not necessarily about the other person. No, no, no. You see, our love as Christians, it's about who we are. Yeah, it's about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now another fruit, another fruit of the Spirit, Paul says here, it is joy. Now, uh, this word joy here, it, it really doesn't have anything to do with our physical pleasure in this life. No, no, because you see, that's that's what we think. It's, you know, this because this flesh, this flesh wants to know what's in it for me. But now this word joy, it has nothing to do with our physical pleasure in this life. Uh, let's go to let's go to uh, Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, Brother Paul, if you will, Philippians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And I entreat thee also, true your brother, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. All right, all right. Now, uh, as Christians, um, we, we can always rejoice, even in the worst of times. Why? Well, because no matter what this life throws at us, we can rejoice because Paul says that our names are written in the book of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so if we're going to be elated, about something, then this is it. Yeah, this is it. This this right here alone should bring us as Christians a certain amount of joy. Uh, let's go. Let's go to Matthew chapter five. <coughs> Matthew chapter five, verses eleven and twelve. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. It says, and Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, 
For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Yeah, you see now, in, in, in this life, uh, and, and the things that we might have to endure concerning this, 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 this physical life that we live here on this earth, those things are not even to be compared with our reward in heaven. Yeah, it's, no, it's no comparison at all. No, 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 no. When we look at it and read history and, and look at what the Bible says about what uh, the apostles in the early church had to endure, uh, these people went through these things gladly. I believe the apostles said we rejoice at having been, you know, embarrassed for the name of Christ. Yeah, and, and so these things that we have to endure in this life, they don't even compare to that reward that, that we have waiting for us in heaven. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. Uh, uh, Brother Ken, Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and the peace that you trust in him, mm -hmm. so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, all right. Yeah, you see, the simple fact that we believe and obey God, this should fill us with joy. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, we, we know, we know that God is gonna keep his word. We know he's gonna do what he says he's gonna do. Yeah, and, and so this should bring us some joy. This should bring us joy that we can pull from even in the worst of times. You know, because from time to time we, we get bad news. Yeah, we get bad news. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to be able to pull from something. We need to be we need something to hold on to, and this is the joy uh, that we can pull from. Like I say, even in the even in the worst of times. Uh, let's go back to Philippians. In Philippians chapter one. <laughs> in verse number four. Paul says, he says, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. You see, sometimes, sometimes we, we, we as Christians, we take this for granted. But what is it? What is it, is it that we take for granted from time to time? Well, we take for granted the simple fact that we can pray to God. We have the ear of God. Yeah. And now this alone should bring us some joy. Amen. Yeah, we can say, we can ask God for things and, and thank God for things, and He hears us. He hears our prayers. Yeah, because now let me tell you something. I'll be honest with you. There are a lot of people, even right now this morning, praying to God, but now He is only listening to those that are in the family. Yeah, He's only we we have His ear. Yeah, and me personally, I, I think a lot of times we, we, we've avoided many things in this country simply because we got Christians that's getting prayers for them. Now that's just my personal opinion. You can take it or leave it. Yeah, but I, I, I truly believe that much, much, much of our, our success in this company, in this country rather, is because we have Christians that are getting, getting prayers through to our Heavenly Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so this ought to, this ought to make us happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why, as a Christian, I would be concerned. I would be concerned if I didn't have nothing that I could thank God for. I would be absolutely concerned about that because He's done so many things for us. Yeah, so many things. That next breath that you take, and that's a gift from God. Yeah. And, and, and so I would be concerned if I wake up in the morning and I ain't got nothing that I can thank God for. Yeah, even throughout the day, I can't. I ain't got nothing that I can't thank God for. But bro, bro, I can't. I, I got to thank God that that long side hill. <laughs> yeah, because now we might have to tear the street back up again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and so thank the Lord when things go well. Thank Him, thank Him, because they don't always have to go good. Yeah, and so again, again, this should be something. 
especially those of us that are Christians, there should be something uh, that we can always thank God for. Um, yeah, well, the, the next thing that Paul mentions here is peace. Peace. Uh, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You see now, uh, the reason why I went here is because for me personally, mm -hmm. peace, it, it begins with Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because now with, without him, without Christ, there would be no peace between God and man. Yeah, it, it, no peace at all, none, none. Now, in that household of Cornelius, of Cornelius uh, a Gentile, um, this is what Peter said in Acts chapter 10. Let's go over there. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. It says here, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You see now, this, this is God's doing. Yeah, this is God's doing. Jesus is Lord, and he is Lord because God made him our Lord. And you know, we take people, we take people, and we put them on the same level as Jesus. Yeah, we, 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 certain people, they have their own religious leaders, and, and they try to set them on the same level as Jesus. I remember I was watching this documentary, and, and the, the guy that was doing the research, he said, well, you know, uh, we have Moses, we have Christ, and we have Muhammad. You know, and they, you know they, they're all on the same level. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. Now, 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 you may have a religious leader, and you may set him up there, but now what he doesn't understand is that Christ is his Lord. Yeah, yeah. He's all about Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just don't know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is God's doing. God is the one that made him our Lord. Yeah, and as a Christian, uh, the action, the action of peace, it should play an important role in our lives. Uh, let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter, chapter 3 and verse number 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 15. It says here, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Yeah, you see, God wants us to be at peace among ourselves. Yeah, we've been called into the one body. And so God wants us to be at peace among ourselves. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. And let's see what Christ says about uh, the peacemakers over here. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 9. Matthew 5, 9. The Lord says, said, Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the peacemakers. Yeah, these, these are the children of God. And the only way, the only way that this can happen 
is by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yet without the Lord, nothing, not, none of this works without him. Without the sacrifice that Christ made, none of this works. None of it. Because God won't accept it. And that's why Christ had to come here. And yet we must let the word of the Lord dwell in us richly, not poorly. And as Colossians, I believe it's 3.16 says, yeah, richly. And in other words, let the Lord have his way. Let him have his way because believe it or not, he's going to have it anyhow. Yeah, because at, at the judgment, every knee is going to bow. Whether you want it to or not, it's going to bow. I heard one old preacher say, he said, even if you ain't got no knees, be, it's gonna, where the knee's supposed to be, it's going to be bent. <laughs> Lord, preachers come up with some stuff, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and so we, we, we need to let the Lord have his way. Why? So that these things, these fruits of the Spirit, so that they can grow in our lives. And not just among the members of the church either. But now in Romans chapter 12. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 18. Paul says here, If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably, with all men. Yeah, all men. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, now, now you see, if it be possible, if it be possible, the Lord wants us to be at peace with all men. But now in order to do this, it's going to take some effort on our behalf. Yeah. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 14. Let's go over here. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 19. It says here, Let us therefore follow after the, thing, after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Now, from what I've been made to understand here, uh, this means that the only one who gets their way all the time is God. God is the only one who gets his way all of the time. We do not compromise the things of God. But on other things, if it be possible, we work together. Yeah, yeah, if it be possible, we work together. And, and so, first we want to be in a peaceful relationship with God. Next, we want a peaceful relationship with the church. And if it be possible, we want a peaceful relationship with all men. Yeah, yeah, let's, 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 let's do those things that, that, that make for peace. Now, the next thing that Paul says here is long-suffering. Long-suffering. Long-suffering is a fruit of the Spirit. And the word long-suffering means to be patient. It means to be tolerable. Uh, it means to be, to be uh, tolerable with people uh, in, 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 with regard to their situations. Um, now, This means that as a Christian, we must work on having the right attitude. Yeah, we must work on keeping the right attitude. Yeah, we have to, we have to, we have to work on the right attitude towards those who may possibly annoy us. <laughs> those who, who, who may oppose us or those who try to test our patience. Yeah, we got to keep the right attitude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, 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 as Christians, we need to do our, our level-headed best not to retaliate, and this is going to be hard. 
Yeah, because now, you know, some people, some people just get on your last. They, they get on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but we, have, we have to do our best not to strike back, especially out of hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, because now again, I, I I know that there are there are some people that just they just wear you down. <laughs> they do. They just wear you down. <laughs> and when you see them, you immediately don't want to be bothered. Yeah. You can be in a good mood and see them, and you don't want to be bothered. <laughs> yeah, because they 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 wear you down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now as Christians, we we can't be like that. We can't be like that. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 4. Uh, Brother Jones, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. For despite us, mm -hmm. thou, the riches of the goodness and forbearance and long suffering, mm -hmm. not knowing that the Goodness of God leadeth thee to repent. All right, all right. Let's also go to Second Peter chapter three and verse number verse number nine. It says here, uh, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us." Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see now, what, what these two verses tell me, they tell me that if I want the Lord to be long-suffering with me, then guess what I need to be? I need to be long-suffering with other people. Yeah. Now, this don't mean I need to let you take advantage of me. You know, every time I see you, you know, this, you, you, you know, I'm just, I'm just a rug, and you just walk off. That's not what this means, you know. Uh, and, and some people take this, you know. And I've heard people say, "Well, you know, y'all supposed to be Christians. Y'all supposed to help everybody." Uh, that's, that's not necessarily the case. You know, we need to know what your situation is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so again, 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 we want the Lord to be long suffering with us. While we make it through, because you know sometimes you know it, things take time. You know, and, and thank the Lord He didn't snatch us when we were still out there messing around. You know, um, and, and, and so we we, we want to be long suffering with people. And you know, my my motto is you know as long as as long as you you know you working in the right direction and you pulling in the same direction I'm pulling in, I'm with you. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go through it with you. But now you jump on the other side of the fence. Like Brother Nash told me years ago, Brother Nash said, boy, you on your own. <laughs> yeah, he said, you on the wrong side of the fence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so again, again, we, we want to be long-suffering with others. Um, next, Paul says gentleness. Gentleness, which is kindness. Which means that sometimes we need to be considerate of other people's feelings and mindful of what we say and how we say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you know we, we, when you're dealing with other per people's personal situations, you know, we, we need to come at people right because sometimes people just come at you know people come at you wrong. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's almost like kicking a person when they're down, you know, just, you know, try, try, try to understand what the other person is going through. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 15. It says here, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even... Christ. You see, it, it, it's always good. It's, it's always good uh, to try and to talk to people really the same way that you would like to be talked to. Yeah. yeah. And when it comes to, to the church, uh, we, we must remember that we, 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 are, we are a family here. Yeah, Ephesians 3.15, we're a family. 
And, and, and this family, this family is so close-knit in Christ that in the next verse, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 16, from whom the, all, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, as members of the body of Christ, you know what? I, I, I should be kind to you. I should be gentle to you. Yeah, and you should be kind and gentle to me. Because every joint, every joint should be working together. Yeah, every joint. Yeah, and, and so what we need to do is we need to uh, ask ourselves individually, am I doing my part? Yeah, because you see, there is no unimportant part of the body. Now, I mean, let me tell you something. I, I lost this fingernail right here a few years ago. Now, if you were to ask me ahead of time, you know, what was the, you know, most important part of your body and what was the least important part of the body, I probably would have said, well, you know, fingernail, you, you, can, you can live without that. And you can. But now lose one. And let me tell you how uncomfortable that is. This, this thing serves a purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, 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 I mean, that skin underneath there is so sensitive, boy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Everything it touched, <laughs> even after it healed up. Yeah, until that nail grew back, and I'm thankful it did. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, there is no unimportant part of the body. And, and so we must all ask ourselves Am I doing my part as, as a member of the body of Christ? Yeah, 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 because now, uh, every part of the body is important. Yeah, yeah, and if I am a part of the body, then that means that the body needs me. Thank you very much. Yeah, and so I need to do my part. Yeah, I need to do my part. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and so now, if, if I'm a part of the body, and I am not doing my part, the question becomes, if not, why not? Yeah, if not, why not? If I'm a part of the body and I'm not doing my part, why am I not doing it? Yeah, and why am I not doing what I'm supposed to do? And where are the time we'll pick up from this point on next one? Thank you for visiting the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Hope to see you again soon.